Hey, good morning. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and this is this is Fritz and Friends. Um, it is May 1st, 2018, and uh, I'm glad to be back pair programming with everybody here. Um, I've got a guest today, and we're, uh, we're going to get in. We're going to be talking a lot about C Sharp today. We're going to be looking at some features that, that I've been struggling with, and I, I thank him tremendously for, for seeing my, my cry for help and offering to help out here. Let's go over and let me introduce my guest today is Bill Wagner. Hey, Bill, thanks for joining me. Morning, Jeff. Good to see you. So, yeah, I've been struggling with async and await. Now, you've been doing this for a long time. Why don't you give folks the quick introduction so folks know who you are. So who am I? So I'm Bill Wagner. I currently work on the .NET content team. So we are the team that is responsible for everything under docs.microsoft.com slash .NET. Yeah. So that is what my team does. Uh, specifically, I cover the C Sharp language and different areas of the framework since we split that up pretty evenly among all of us. And, you know, since we can't, can't write a C Sharp program without using things in .NET Core, .NET Framework, and so on. Uh, so that's that's my team. And I know you had Myra on about a month ago now, two months oh, ago. Oh, uh, gosh, we had Myra back in uh, uh, January. She was one of our first guests. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, talking about the things that we do in terms of building docs.microsoft.com and working with the community to improve our experience there. Yeah. So this is another way I want to do this. Uh, you know, as you say, you you called out on Twitter that this just wasn't working. And, you know, this is an area that we know is hard. Oh, and yeah. as much as we've tried, none of us are convinced that we've explained it as well as we should yet. There's definitely questions here. Oh, my gosh, yes. Um, I and, and async await, it's been around since, since version 4. Four of the framework, I want to say. So that's almost ten that's years. Correct. Yep. Oh my yeah. gosh. So so now I feel old, and I feel like why haven't I gotten my act together and started looking at this sooner? <laughs> right. Um, so so yeah. part of this is it's really hard. So as we start this, I yeah. want to give everybody watching a couple bits of of a mental model about async and await that really helps understand the abstractions that we're trying to do both at the language and with the library level. Okay. Sure. And now, um, actually, one... well, actually one of our questions, Paula Bean is, is asking in the Twitch chat room that um, she thought async and await was a Python feature, but we've had it in C sharp for a while. I don't know which language got those keywords first. Yeah. Um, as a concept, the idea of a, of a future or a coroutine has been around in language design for quite a while. Okay. Um, Python certainly does a really good job. Um, JavaScript or ECMAScript 6 has added it. Yeah. Um, TypeScript now has the same kind of keywords. So these concepts are going to help even in other languages. Cool. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, actually, let's start with that part first. The term that you'll hear if you get into language design books is something called a coroutine. Mm. And C Sharp has them in a couple places. One is async and wait, and one is iterator methods. Now, here's the idea behind what a coroutine is or what's going on here. If you think of every synchronous method that you've ever written in C Sharp, C++, whatever language it is, right. one of two things happens. You call that method, and it yeah. does what it's supposed to do and returns. Sure. It or, prints hello world oh, and is done. Whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Or you call that method, something bad happens, and it throws an exception. Yeah. Okay. Those are the two things that can happen. All right. Right? Yeah. Now, when we introduce the idea... Of... Go ahead. Oh, no. Please. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Bated now, breath here. <laughs> the idea of a, of, of a coroutine, now three things can happen. You call this method... And either it finishes synchronously and it's done all of its work. Yeah. Or it fails immediately and it throws an exception. Or it returns some object 
that more or less says, I'm not done yet. There's more work that's going to happen. It will either fail or succeed later. But hold on to this object. It will help you understand what happens later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Here's a now here's a token. Right, now, this is effectively... Right. Here's a thing. Yeah. Now, for async and await, that thing is a task or a task-like object. Right. So now, when you get back a task, what you have is an object that says the work you started may not have finished yet. Hold on to this task, and you can ask it, are you finished? And if you have finished, you can ask it, did you succeed, or did you throw an exception? Okay? So, so in... All right. It, in previous models, right, in older versions of C Sharp, we had... Right, we mm -hmm. returned some sort of an what was it, an async? It was an I asynchronous something. I forget what it was called. Right, I can't remember either because I've tried to convert any of that code into uh, async and await. <laughs> but right, okay. you would have some kind of a handler, or you would register some event to say, "All right, I've started this task." Yes. And then that routine would finish. Right, I've started the task. I've done my work, and then. Right. This other thing that you handed it would get called later, or this other thing would raise an event later, or what have you. Sure, sure. Okay. So now, the idea behind async and await as the keywords, and what happens is, now when you say a method is async, what you've now said is, this method may not have finished all its work when it returns to you. Okay. It may okay. have more stuff okay. that it still has to do. And what it returns is going to hold on to that more stuff. And when you await something, yeah. you say, I can't continue until the thing I'm awaiting has finished either successfully or thrown an exception. So now return, let other stuff continue, and I'll continue here when I can. And okay. I got bought into that routine idea. So, okay? so. I've I've effectively to 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 draw a metaphor here. I've effectively been given that that token that you get when you're waiting at the at a restaurant. You're waiting to to get your seat. You've been given it, and they've said we're going to buzz you when your seat's ready. But while while you're holding this token, and it's a task in C, C sharp. But while I'm holding that token and waiting for it to buzz, the bus boys over cleaning the table, and they're they're getting the wait right. staff ready and all that. And when it is ready. I, uh, the token will buzz, and I know, oh, I can go take my table. That's a very good analogy, I, and I want to extend that, that one a little bit Okay. to understand the distinction between asynchronous programming and multi-threaded programming. Yeah, okay? okay. So imagine you, or you and your wife or you and the kids are making breakfast. Okay? Sure, okay. So, the people represent the CPUs or the threads that are doing active work. And let's say you're making omelets and toast. Okay. Okay. So multi-threaded says I can get this stuff done faster if I put more threads or more CPUs actively doing things. So maybe, you know, it's Mother's okay. Day. I'm going to have my daughter start to chop up the peppers for and, and the mushrooms for the omelet. Meanwhile, I'm going to be beating the eggs and warming up the pan and getting things ready to cook that way. And the youngest child maybe is pouring the orange juice. So and, active and task puts the toast in the toaster, pushes the button. It's running in the background. Right. Now, here's where the toaster becomes where I'm going to say that's async as oh. opposed to multi-thread. Okay. okay, sure. So these, these other tasks, the CPUs or the people are actively doing something, right? I'm chopping up the vegetables. I'm mixing the eggs, what have you. Sure, sure. Starting the toast is asynchronous, but not necessarily multi-threaded. And here's where I want to make that distinction so we can get throughput. Once I push the button on the toaster, the person representing a CPU doesn't have to sit there and watch it. Ah. That CPU can go do something else that's interesting and useful. That that thread can, can right. go do something. Okay, okay. So now, here's where that distinction comes in and as to what we're trying to do with async and await and task-based programming and so on. If I'm working on a compute-bound, CPU-bound problem that I can break up, 
I can get it done faster by throwing more CPUs at it. Okay. Sure. Sure. If I'm strictly looking at throughput, right? Can I yeah. handle a whole lot of processes on my website? Mm. I can get better throughput if I go asynchronous so that I get a request. Now I've got to maybe make a query to a database on another machine yeah. that thread back on thread pool and handle the next request coming in okay. or the next thing the database is giving me data and send it back. Okay. So multi-threaded programming is about getting more operations done faster because I can throw more CPUs at it. If I can break the problem up, asynchronous programming is about making sure that the CPU resource can always be doing something useful instead of just waiting to be notified about something else. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. So, so the problems that I was dealing with, this is starting to make, make a little bit more sense. So I was dealing with connecting to, connecting to the Twitch IRC uh, mm -hmm. server so that I could interact with folks that are in chat, but I was doing it with tasks and with asynchronous programming and, and somewhere I was jumping threads or I right. wasn't handling it properly. And because clearly managing that IRC connection and doing that chatting, I want that to happen on a background thread. I don't want that to happen on my mm -hmm. primary thread. And particularly those sending and receiving of messages while it's doing the network transport, that should be asynchronous. Right, because your okay. thread doesn't have to do anything, right? You're waiting for the next message to come in. Yeah. That thread can be doing something else for you. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, so before we go look at the code and we start and we right. start taking a look over here, I've got to I've got to uh, I've got to share with folks that <laughs> it's May, and and I'm I'm making a commitment here that May is for Max here on the stream. So all May, all month, we're going to be working with .NET with C Sharp on a Mac. All right? So that just throws another wrinkle into it, except .NET Core and C Sharp works great on a Mac. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, let's go over to the code. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. So we should start to see our friends from Twitch chat appear over there on the side. Right? And I'm not seeing them just yet. Where is it? Come on. I'm expecting to see my chat folks up here on the right there. But in the middle here, you can see we're on a Mac. I'm not on my normal um, Visual Studio here. Um, and I, I don't see my Mac, my uh, Twitch chat room over here. One second. Let's see if I can fix this real quick. Uh, ta -ta -ta. I need... Nuts, this is going to be tricky to do. I thought I had. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, crumbs. Let's see if I can load this real quick. Um, no. Oh, gosh. This is what I get for not testing everything before I got started. Because uh, <laughs> you're right, the Twitch is going to, the Twitch is going to be uh the twitch the twitch chat is not going to look quite right there look and it's even completely wrong showing everybody the wrong thing here i am so sorry we have to do this real quick just so we can see that the chat here on stream uh, da, da, da. see if i can fix this real quick no it's not happening of course well i'm going to try to load it on my mac over here sure and th this is a Windows thing. This is me not having something set up quite right ahead of time. Um, folks are only getting 1080. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Twitch affiliate, so it might not load right away for you. Um, but the, uh, the scaling will appear for our viewers as, um, as the, the transcoders are available. If Twitch has a lot of stuff going on right now, they don't necessarily make it available for everybody. Um, and of course, Firefox, yes, deployed an update right as we're about to get started here. Isn't that nice of them? Come on. 
Scaling could be down or in progress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could be. Could be. So I'm at least seeing the chat a little bit, so hopefully that helps our viewers. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to run without the chat on the side for now. And we'll just... Okay. Because I can see it. You'll see me go like this on screen, but I can kind of keep track of that as we're coding, too. Yeah. All right. There we go. Um, and I'm just waiting because Firefox is now trying to install. <laughs> oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, I do see it, and I see the, ch the chat. Okay, at that's good. For me, so we can... We've at least got that. All right. Um, here we go. Wow, we've got a lot of folks watching us today. Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? Um, all right. So here we are. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm using .NET, the .NET SDK 2.1 on my Mac. Um, and you can see I'm using Visual Studio Live Share. Um, I have the little gang of folks here. You can see, and if I click that, we should see, we should uh, jump right there. You can see the tape flag where Bill's cursor is inside of our code, right there on line 114. So let me open that back up. There we go. You can see his name. So that's where Bill's typing because we're using this Visual Studio Live Share. So we can both collaborate and work on the and same code at the same time. All Shout right. out to the team. I'm using Visual Studio on my PC. So right. There you go. So it doesn't matter whether you're on Visual Studio 2017, you're on Visual Studio Code. If you're on Visual Studio Code on Windows, Mac, or Linux, it works everywhere. So really cool. And it, uh, that a really cool tool that really lets us work wherever we want to be together. So, yeah, great shout out to the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they've got some big things planned for next week at Build. So, all right. Now, the file all in particular right. that, that I wanted to talk to you about was this file, this chat client class where I'm doing the, the asynchronous connections to IRC using a TCP client, right? So I'm using the network client to make those requests and work work directly with what's going on um, on the network socket. I know I've got some problems in here. I know it's all running synchronously. And and gosh, I'm even, I started okay. trying to dial in throttling here, and I just haven't gotten that finished yet. And that's why I'm saying throttle would get value or default zero seconds right now. So it, it's not doing anything with its throttling. Right. Okay, so let's take so what we do. We're going to async this using the. Oh no, and there goes our network. Furness <laughs> this stuff. Right. All right, so we're going to start okay, to make so our. I, I drove down, down into the code a little bit. So I dove down into the code a little bit, and okay. I'm starting at that the send message routine. Sure. Okay. Okay. And then we'll start moving up from there. And I'm seeing some of the questions in here on how task works and what kind of things and how that's going to work for us. Okay. So right now, let's just change the return type here to a task. Okay. Okay. And now this thing is going to be return something that says I'm done when I'm done. And okay. now as we do that, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to change a right line to a right line async. And if I remember right, I think there's a flush async as well. Yes. Okay. And now because those are both there, I'm going to say, you know, this is now asynchronous. I need to await this. Right. right. Okay. So there's because there's... otherwise this thing is returning a task, and if I don't await it, I'm just starting the task, but I'm using what's called fire and forget. Okay. Okay. I also need to await this task, 
And now I've got the red squiggles. So what I need to do up here is I'm going to make this an async method. Okay. And it clears so them now up. it's okay. returning a task, right? It's returning a task. That task is being generated by the compiler because I'm doing these awaits inside the method. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so mm -hmm. far that's that's already good. I like this. Now I'm going to do one other thing here, because thread dot sleep that's takes this thread and says you just have to stop. Don't do anything. Just 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 block. And don't do anything, and this thread is stuck in a waiting state. Okay? Right. So instead of thread.sleep, I'm going to use task.delay, and we're going to await that. Okay? Okay. Task.delay does the same thing as thread.sleep does. But now what's going to happen is it's going to asynchronously await. It's going to say, okay, I can return this thread and do some useful work. If you get later where you're doing something with the your throttling um, status and, and that that number actually has some time period to it, you know this will free that thread back to any place you know to, to where it could be useful on the thread pool to do some other work. Okay. Okay. That's all good. So so far we've done this. That's this is awesome. So so we're stopping the now, blocking that was there. We're releasing right. control for that specified amount of seconds. Okay. Yep. The same thing with right line async, since that's doing a network write. You know, we're going to send those bytes to the network controller, and then that can do do you know this thread can then do other work while the network sends those bytes out on the stream. Okay, that's good. After it's written everything, we're going to flush the stream if we need to, and that's going to happen asynchronously, so we're going to make the command of the network controller, and then that's going to then do whatever it needs. Okay. Okay? And this thread can do other work. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're going to need to find all the references to send message. Yeah. Now, fortunately, we have code lens telling us... Private, so They'll be here. Right. So private, they're all only in this in this file. And Code Lens is telling us there's three references I can see on my screen right here. So I can I can take advantage of Code Lens and it'll actually show me where they are. All right. I'll let you hit Code Lens and I'll hop to where you are. <laughs> so I've got one right up top here where it's calling where when I'm posting a message, when I'm actually sending a message out, um, right, I want to perhaps send a message directly to somebody that's um, that's talking on stream here. I'm I'm posting a message using this method, and I'm sending a whisper using the method that you see down here on line 160 as well. So I've got these two different ways that I can send messages. Okay. All right, and both of these give a really good example of a, a good best practice and the occasional, if I really, really, really need to tweak out the absolute best performance I can possibly get. So okay. that actually, now, that actually that leads message, to a question from uh, somebody in the chat room is asking, how is the performance of async and await? Does it change the way my code performs? It does. Okay. Now, you know, let's let's be let's be honest here. So adding ASIC and await, the compiler generates quite a bit of code. It, it has to generate a state machine to be able to come back in, come back out. Visual Studio just crashed on me. So as I explain this, I'm gonna rejoin our collaboration session. Um, so what happens so the compiler generates all this extra code. Okay. To, to manage ASIC and await. Now, let's figure out that if that happens, you know, that has to happen for our code to be correct. So either the compiler has to generate some code or you have to do it yourself. Um, so when you do asynchronous, there's a little bit of overhead to it. And if you don't need to be asynchronous, then we wouldn't be. Mm. And here again, let's get to where we were talking about throughput, okay? 
some of the latest benchmarks uh, for .NET Core and async and await show, you know, tens of milliseconds difference. Oh dear, I am not able to join your session right now. I may need to get a new um, get a new session. All right, let's. So I will try that one again. Yeah. Try if we can join it one more time. Um, and you know that. So as I said, async and await is going to add tens of milliseconds when you're doing something. Okay. Being able to use the threads in the thread pool more effectively is going to have you know massive throughput results because now my threads aren't sitting there blocked doing nothing they're actively doing work right so that makes sense okay the net in my doing is actually really big compared to a really small cost right when we do this correctly so now i'm connecting to the session we should be able to get in here fairly quickly and then we'll pick up where we left off with there you are. our post message and our whisper message all righty i'm joining Configuring the service. Woohoo. And we're in. All right. So, so I'm here online. Where you are at. Right. Okay, so now here we have a really interesting bit. And we're seeing our um, green squiggles here, which is a nice feature that the compiler now says with an analyzer hey, this is an asynchronous method and you're not awaiting it, so you're just firing and forgetting. Yeah. So I, I like that... Post message and... So, Bill, I like that, that phrase, fire and forget, right? So you, what you're saying, just to make sure it's clear for the folks that are watching, when with the way that send message is called here, it's literally going to execute and return immediately, even though things are going on still in the yep. background with the await. Okay. Right. And since we're not keeping track of that task, well, now we just start the task, and you know we're not we don't care. I oh, got it. Okay. This is useful, say, for error logging, right? Because I'm going to just start the task because I had an exception. I want to log something. I don't, you know, I'm already in an error condition. I can't do much one way or another. So let's just log it and not worry too much. Right. right? I don't need to know there was a success um, to writing it. Right. So I'm going to change this to a task okay. in post message. And now here's where I can say we can do something that ekes out a little bit of performance, but can be dangerous. So right now I can just return send message, right? The return value from send message because mm -hmm. send message returns a task and it is an asynchronous method. Okay. So the way I have now changed this post message is a synchronous task returning method okay so yeah here's you where i start this. to get confused okay go ahead <laughs> i'm right. following you right now now this is this is a a very, very important thing to kind of keep track of because it's where a the abstraction can leak okay yeah this method is now synchronous so any resources or any local variables will go out of scope when this method ends. Now, right here, it's just a string. The string's passed the send message, so send message has a copy of it. Right. It all is good. But let's say I allocated something that was disposable here inside of using, and then I return this task that's trying to make use of that disposable object. Well, I've exited the using, and I've now just freed that you know, you know, dispose of that resource and it's still trying to be used inside this task and your program crashes. Yeah, you're going to so lose. So I typically would not do this. Right, so I typically would not do this. What I would normally do is I will make this an async method and I will await this task. Okay. Okay. And what this would now be useful is if this was around, you know, inside a try or finally or any kind of cleanup that doesn't happen until this task finishes and this is safer okay. okay now now what 
what looks a little confusing there is we have an async task, but we're not we're returning a type of task, yep. but we're not actually in the body of that post message or whisper message method. We're not actually returning an object. So that right. looks a little confusing. The compiler creates it for you. Yeah, the compiler creates that for you because of the await. Okay. Okay, because I'm awaiting the task that is returned by send message. What the compiler does is create a new task inside whisper message that completes when the send message task completes. Okay. Okay. Now, now so um, in almost all cases, I would just do it this way. All right. Now, um, a Titan Gamer okay. in, the, in the chat room is asking, is fire and forget okay with async and await when dealing with event handlers? Now, that's actually one of the things that this bubbles mm -hmm. up into is I have an event handler that, that I want to trigger based off of a message that is received. So I think we're going to come back to that question here in the code in a little bit when we start looking at receiving right. messages. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to make a couple quick things here that probably would be something that I would do in production code. And, you know, here I'm kind of doing sort of some quick design and, and requirements. Okay. Because I want okay. to demonstrate this feature. Sure. There is one, when I want to do something synchronous, so I want to avoid the task stuff. Okay. Yeah. So let's take whisper message. And let's say I want to put in, you know, the, that the username can't be null or can't be blank, right? Sure. So I would have something like if string dot is null or white space. Uh, username. We're going to throw a new argument exception. And... Name of username. Come on. Come on, Visual Studio, you can do it. So what what folks are, are hearing Maybe. you're running into is I'm assuming it's the IntelliSense. It's not automatically completing some of these immediately. And my keyboard seems to have frozen up at the moment. I am getting some unresponsiveness, but we shall see if it comes back. So I may need to rejoin our chat our coding session one more time. Okay. Now, th this is, we are still working with the preview bits for live share. Of course. And, uh, right. And going between Mac and Visual Studio and so on. So. Oh, yeah. So the fact that we're, that we're able to do this is uh, initially, right away here, pretty big deal. Is yep. Skype bringing the system so to its knees? Um well, Bill isn't sharing his screen. <laughs> He's just sharing his camera. So I think we're in, we're okay there. What I so I'm uh, Visual Studio is restarting. Oh, um, and there's a little I'm bit of a, there's a little bit of discussion of what a best practice is here in the chat room. There are no best practices; only those that have been successful in a particular situation. Oh. Um. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it's the habits that we use because they work most of the time. Yeah. I, so personally, I often um, tend to try and avoid the phrase best practice because I'm not sure we've achieved best all the time, and I want to keep trying to improve, but that's generally the an accepted phrase, so there we go. Yeah. So, two, 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 and there we are. I'm back. All right. All right. So, no. typing away here, and maybe called a reasonable practice. <laughs> yes, I like it. And we'll see if this will work, or if I'm. I may try it in. I may try the VS Live Share and VS Code. We shall see, because it seems to be hurting again. Oh, no. 
Yeah. What's funny is we had Jonathan Carter on a few weeks ago, and he uh, he had amazing performance with VS Live Share from his Mac. I'm, and I, I keep thinking back to that and thinking, I wonder what he had configured. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be, you know, and, and in terms of, yeah, it did. And in terms of craziness for me is I also have a, dog food build visual studio so it's a good thing oh. i'm not sharing my screen oh yeah um. i know that one. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah there we go the secret stuff in visual uh visual studio live share is if user equals jonathan then <laughs> no 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 the the folks in the chat room here are commenting about a uh, live share yeah it could could be um and you're back there we go so that's back in visual studio so i did start visual studio code so i can join there too so um fletcher king is asking me one. Is asking me why I'm using Visual Studio Code instead of Visual Studio. Um, Fletcher, I'm on a Mac today, and uh, Visual Studio for Mac does not have Visual Studio Live Share yet. So that's why I'm using Visual Studio Code. It's also great, it works on all three platforms. And uh, yeah, this is the one I wanted to show today. So. All right, so is it back? It's back. All right. Yes, I'm wearing the Ineta hat today, right? Courtesy of my friend, uh, oh my gosh, in Colorado, Julie. I can't remember her last Julie name. Julie Yak. Julie Yak, of course. She All passed right. me the Ineta hat a couple years ago. Okay. So there, despite a few typos. Okay, so now if we wanted to do something like this, where if string is null or white space, we want to throw an exception, okay? Right. Now, because this is an asynchronous method, that exception will only be observed once you await the task that comes back from whisper message. Now, okay? it, I, I didn't see you complete the statement here. I'm still hanging at this quote. Here on line 159. All right. We will switch over to Visual Studio Code. Just to see if we can get that to pop. Um, I'm going to find. I'm going to save yeah. that real quick, and I'm going to finish your throw statement here while you're switching. Yep. All right. So finish and that out. And we need a paren there. Why doesn't it like string is null or white space? Yes. Oh, it's a capitalization capitalization deal. Um, missing okay. username. There we go. All right. So we're still installing the extension in Visual Studio Code. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So what I want to, well, we'll keep this moving while we do this. Is since we're we've updated both um, process message and whisper message. Right. Send me, yeah. Once again, if you want to find, use code lines and find where those are called, and we're going to want to wait, await those places as well. All right, so I've got one reference for each one of these. So I'm going to click on Code Lens, and it's showing me here. Um, I have I actually have a send message async method inside of my Twitch service. 
that will call a post message here. So I'm going to click through to that method. And over mm -hmm. here, this is inside of my Twitch service. This is a hosted service that runs on a background thread inside the ASP.NET Core uh, website that this runs as part of. So instead of returning task from result true, um, I can actually change this to an await on post message here, like you were suggesting. That's not a T. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So await on that. It's now telling me that it can only be used within an async method. So send message async actually isn't async. So now I'm running into now I'm I'm running into this. I need to bubble this up. Right. I've I've right. got to continue passing my asynchronous interaction up the chain. So I guess I should mark this method as async as well. And I can get rid of this task from result. Correct. Okay. And not all code paths return a value. So now, now, now I'm getting a little confused here. I am returning a value, but it's not a task of type bool. It's just a task. Okay. Hey, there we go. So we'll try one more time joining this. Right. All right. Coming on. Finished installing on Visual Studio Code, so we'll see if I can get there. Um, oh, Hertz. Hertz is saying use observables instead. Ah, uh, we'll maybe we'll talk about observables here. You might be onto something. And Johnny Most is asking about delegates and how they give async await control. Let's let's talk about that in just a little bit here. Delegates are tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I can see where they would get confusing, right? Delegate is a pointer to a method that we're going to pass around. And, and be able to eventually call, it feels like a task does a little bit of that with some extra stuff. Return a Boolean is what they're saying I need to be doing here. You're right. So let's just return true. Yep. And that clears that out. All right, so if I do the same thing with my send whisper, I change this around and do a wait over a wait. And then I make this just return true. Now, whisper message, I don't think, did we make that async? Async task, whisper message. You're going to have to repeat. Yep. Right, so, oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't make this method async. And now that goes away. All right. So that makes sense to me. Timeout user, I haven't finished implementing yet over here. All right. So so um, we've got some interesting questions coming in on the chat room here. And I, I know you're still trying to get connected. So um, there's mm -hmm. a question that says, why not get rid of the task of type bool here? And instead, just return a Boolean directly from these methods that are sending the async, sending the whisper async. Right. So that's 
So that was a language design choice. Yeah, so once you say async, what the async keyword does on a method is it tells the compiler that this method needs all the internal wirings up to return a task. So it is going to take whatever the return type you intended and now okay. say this is now going to return a task of whatever that type is. So if it was void, it's now just task. If it was bool, it should now be task of bool. Okay. In order to just make that really clear as you're working, you now return the type that should be in that task or the type parameter of that task. So just return for a void method. It's now returning a task. And just bool for task of bool or in task event and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and Scott Addy, our friend Scott Addy, also – uh, one of your colleagues on the on the docs team is saying that in chat client, yes. those async method names should be suffixed with async. Yeah, that's I think that's a good practice. If you have an asynchronous method, yes, put async in the method name. Yes. Now I have I can see code again. All right, this is awesome. <laughs> I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm over here in Twitch service. And if I go yep. back, so um, so Scott is suggesting that we rename post message and whisper message here. So if I do an F12, it takes me right back to that right. method name here. And I'm just going to put async at the end of these two method names. And then, oh, correct. And now. And I would just do that with an, with an F2 refactoring, which I'm going to let, let you do locally. Yeah, yeah. And then it will change every place it's called as well. Well, I only have it in these two places, I believe. So I'm, I'm just going okay. to push that through, and we'll do that over here. So I just have post message and whisper message. Those are two places where I'm calling uh, send message. And send message, this is async, or async as well. So I'm going to F12 back to that. And you're right, let me do an F F2 refactor. Right, so if you use F2 works both in Visual Studio Code, full Visual Studio, and I think also in Visual Studio for Mac, and I can do a quick rename, and it'll just yes. rename it everywhere. So very, very cool stuff. Um, Philly JW is saying Control R R. Yeah, that works as well. Yep. Um, yep. Okay. So there were. I have. Uh, two references here that I fixed, and here's the last one. And this one is actually an interesting case. Um, our friend, uh, uh, another pair programmer we had on stream, Fierce Kittens is her name, she was showing us you need to properly send a Pong message back to Twitch so that it knows that you're still connected and listening. So this is, okay, so <laughs> this is where we're inside of our receive message loop here on line 166. So we're inside of a loop okay. that's waiting and receiving messages and sending messages, actually, to Twitch. So this is the first of several places here where we need to send a message back to Twitch to let it know, okay, you know, we're, we're done this. Now, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to – we have a decision to make. This is being run with a while true, and it's running, I actually start this method, receive messages on thread, on a separate thread. I'm actually, mm -hmm. I'm actually doing, you know, normal, old school thread management here. Start, here's a new thread, this is the method to call. Right. To kick off that thread, start that thread. So I, this isn't right. async, but it is multi-threaded. For the purpose of right, so we're gonna get to that one. Yeah. So for the but for the purpose of of just telling Twitch, hey, I'm still active here. Part of me thinks it's okay to do that as a as a fire and forget. Be if if I think back to your example about logging, I'm, I want to throw a message over to the mm -hmm. log, and you know what? I don't need to know the error the the result status that it wrote properly to the log. Just Go give it your best chance, your best effort to log. And I think, 
I think I want the same thing here. Send that message back to Twitch, and I'm going to continue processing. So I'm going to give two answers for that. Okay. Yes, I think that's a fine way to do this. Okay. Next step is going to be to make this stuff async too. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I love it. So okay. Where I was going to start here is if we dive down into uh, read message, which is down on line 278. Okay. Let me go down there. Yep, there we are. Well, you notice that doesn't read in it. Right. So we're going to make that... Right. So we're going to make that message as await input stream dot read line async. And this is now going to be an async method that returns a task of string. Yeah. And I'm going to let you do the rename to change its name to read message async. Try to be nice to our little extension here. So I will do that one. There we go. All right. Okay. And now, in place where we call read message async, of which I thought there were two or three, we're going to bubble that one up as well. All right, let's save this. Yeah, our, all of our references count disappeared there, and I've got a red squiggle on private. Private is not valid for this item. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to bet we've got a brace missing someplace up because I'm starting uh, to see some more errors yeah um, I wonder so I have we we put in this if statement for is null or white space on 158 and that looks like it's okay receive messages on thread and that one looks just scanning down here. Uh, oh, wait a sec. Hang on. Looks like that's weird. It looks like one line one eighty eight through one ninety five are duplicated. Do you see that? I'm just gonna delete that, and I think that'll clear it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now if I go back All to right. you now, were down we're good. Yeah, you were down that here on read help. message. There we go. Much better. All right. Okay. So now read message is now async and now we're going to need to await where we read the message. Right, so it's reading the message. There you are. And that is on line 191. Right. And I want to await that. Okay. Which now changes received messages on thread to an async task. Okay. Yeah, okay. And that clears up what was on 191 where message was, it's now a string that it's being returned? Right. Okay. And there was one other place further down that I wanted to do this, and I believe Nope. That one is synchronous. I thought I had seen one more asynchronous thought. I am either missing it now or it's just not there. So now if you look, receive messages on thread, which now sends the message async on line 204. Well, now we can await that. Right. Okay. Okay. Because so we're now already in, in an asynchronous method. So we may as well just do that. Okay. 
All right, so now we've bubbled our asynchronous stuff all the way up to mes receive messages on thread, which is a good, happy place to be. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, that one is, you do this whole receive messages on thread, and you're making a new thread and so on in a knit, okay? Can do is we're just going to do task dot run and we want to call so now right you're receive using receive messages on thread okay and we don't need okay. that new thread object right all right and now we're going to notice something kind of interesting going on here is task.run returns a task. And the way I've written this right now, we didn't make that an asynchronous delegate. So that gets to the question that we had earlier. So I'm going to say I want to async this, and I want to await receive messages on thread. Ooh. So now I've just created an async delegate. Okay. Okay. So receive messages on thread is now, it, it, we made it asynchronous. We're awaiting yes. it and using the task.run here to kick it off asynchronously. Mm -hmm. But how, right. do we, how do we know, how are we ensured that that will run on a separate thread? Right? Does task.run just uh, you return? Well, task.run is going to actually start something. Okay. okay. So, okay. So, so, so the have... run, the the run statement, right? That returns another task. Yeah. Right. So now I have this other task. So now, this one we are probably going to want to fire and forget because here now you're getting into the way you've designed this, and here's where the surgery could get a little bigger. <laughs> Okay, is that well? It's the way you put this together, and it's it's a good. You, you did everything right with threads, and this is just one of those things where we can make a little bit simpler by using task and some of the protocol here. So you have this okay. cancel cancellation token source in shutdown, oh, right? Well, and you have that variable that you're looking at inside this. Um, under that, receive messages on thread. Okay. Right. Right. And during I want... this whole is cancellation requested break and 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 turn right. off and so on. Um, so you still have that protocol in place. So this task is just going to run forever, right? That's the way we've we've designed this, and that's what you what your goal was. Yep. Have it run until okay. un, until I request shutdown, and when I do, we'll we'll signal that token shutdown cancellation is requested, and it'll break out of the thread at that point. Well, the the while right. loop here on one sixty nine. Right, and now that you know, and it is going to do basically the same thing. You've just started this task. It's yes. It's just going to to run something and begin. Now. Because it's async, let's go back into our receive messages on thread, and this is where we're going to push some things to more or less assure this is going to be on another thread. Okay. You can see we have the thread.sleep here at line 172. Right. And we're going to replace that with an await task.delay. And we were using 50 milliseconds there. Yeah, and that's that's really just so it's not completely, right? It, it, it actually pauses for a split second to, to yield the processor so I can actually stop, right? I can actually cancel right. this at some point. So. Now. At this point... Okay, now task out the lay returns a task. So we're going to do something kind of tricky to this is where this, this the abstraction leaks a little bit. 
Okay. But it's a worthwhile leaking. So for if I now can, do, we we've used that term once or twice here. If the abstraction is leaking. Can we uh, describe that for for our viewers, some of our beginners that are watching? Okay. So any t anytime we're programming above machine level, to some degree, we're using abstractions. Yes. Right. And here here when we're saying we start a task, it runs. We don't care where it runs. That's our abstraction. We just started this task. It's going to go do some things, and then when it finishes, we're going to continue. Okay? Right. Now, where this abstraction leaks a little bit is in the task infrastructure. We have what's called a synchronization context. Yes. And that, okay, that very loosely relates to threads. And the reason I say it very loosely relates is that sometimes it relates pretty tightly to a thread because there's only one thread in a context. Like if I think of a UI thread in a Windows process or in a mobile process, I only have one thread that can write to the Windows and can write can paint the user elements. interface. Can paint yeah. the user interface. Okay. So that synchronization context has one thread. Okay. So synchronization and context and thread in that instance are equal. Okay. Now, if I'm running on an ASP.NET process, and that process is managing requests using the thread pool, there are many threads in the thread pool. Oh, yeah. Right? That synchronization context is associated with the thread pool. Okay. So any thread pool thread is part of the same synchronization context. Okay. Okay. So that's where that abstraction leaks a little bit. And that's why we use the abstraction synchronization context because it wouldn't be correct to say it's always the same thread. Mm. But sometimes it is correct to say it's always the same thread because the synchronization context only has one thread. But sometimes <laughs> it's not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, when we said the, the task continues and it'll continue running somewhere... Where that leaks a little bit is that what actually happens is when a continuation happens, mm -hmm. it will mm -hmm. happen on the same synchronization context where the task was started. Okay? So in terms of okay. if I'm on the UI thread in a UI synchronization context, yeah. a continuation after an await will also be on that same synchronization context on the UI thread. So it's going to go through the Windows message pump and do the context switching. And now we're back over here and all those things that people who had to program Windows and C++ and C understand, but really tried to forget <laughs> as many times as we possibly could. And now the, the language is doing it for us. It says this is going to continue in the same kind of place. Okay. So um... – in the in the chat room to confirm uh, our friend Chris Gomez he space shot TV says winforms and WPF they use the synchronization context to guarantee that they get back on the UI thread yes and ASP.NET uses it to get you back on the thread that originated the request it's going to get you back to that context in ASP.NET okay. what it actually does is it's going to grab a thread from the thread pool because we don't care which one it is. Sure. And then it's going to restore all the state from the original context. So okay. your HTTP request, all of that gets restored. Okay, that, that all happens way underneath covers. Oh, yeah. And the reason ASP.NET does it and says, we're just going to give you a thread pull thread and restore stuff, mm -hmm. is it all of this is all about throughput, right? Oh, yeah. So if I'm getting, say, you know, 100,000 requests at my site, I don't want to, you know, now I've made a request to the database, I'm awaiting. I don't want to wait until that single thread is free. I'm just going to grab one, restore context, and keep going. Sure. Okay? And, and Because that's legal and it works. In, okay? in, in the case of ASP.NET where we have lots of threads hanging around and we're not so much concerned with the, the GUI thread, that specific thread that is locked to managing the user interface. So, so this is where my confusion happens because now as, as a server side developer, I don't know it, but I've jumped threads. 
Right. And it's not guaranteed and, and that I jump threads. I'm going to say this is right. And this is what I'm going to say is a useful abstraction. It's an abstraction that occasionally leaks, but because it leaks pretty rarely, it's a very useful abstraction. And, and Spaceboy TV has a, has a point. Where it is, okay, so over they wait doing wind forms, WPF and ASP.net. It's a little bit more confusing. It's, it's not quite the same. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And this is where I want to use that abstraction of a synchronization context. Okay. It will put you back on the same context. And uh, if you keep with that abstraction, it does the same thing. It's uh, in the same context. Okay. Being in the same context is going to have a slightly different meaning if you really dive down under the covers of what happens. But if you stick with the fact that does, I'm on the same context, then I'm okay. All right. And it's only those rare occasions where you really need to understand why you care about what's in a context that it matters. So we've introduced this idea of a synchronization context that it's related to a thread, but it's not exactly the same. So if you think I'm staying in the same context, you're okay. All right. But now here where I really want to say, go ahead and get in a different context. I don't care. I don't need to restore stuff. I can do configure await, and I am going to say false. And where you have um, IntelSense, I will often make this a named parameter, and where your IntelliSense may be a little bit, uh, I believe it's the parameter name is called continue on captured context. So I often make that a named parameter. Yeah, because there it it's is. a little bit more clear. Here, I'll yeah. fill that in for you. Continue. I believe that's the right name. There we go. Yep. There we go. And now what that's saying is when I await this task, just if this is in a process with multiple CPUs, multiple contexts, and so on, grab a thread from somewhere. I don't care where. I don't need to be in the same context. Just go. Okay. Okay. And that's all we need to do to, to say, I don't care about this. This is really often used in client-side programming where I'm going to do a whole bunch of work and I only need to get back on the UI thread to do the last bit of stuff that's updating the UI. So let other continuations go on some other context in the thread pool, whatever. And then when it's time to update the UI, now restore the correct context. Um, so uh, Philly JW asks a good question. What kind of info does the context hold that you would have to consider? Localization info? Um, language is, is the only thing that he could think of for ASP.NET. So... Um, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, okay. So I don't know the exact answer for all the different kinds of contexts. Okay. So the abstraction is things needed to restore correctly. So a couple other things in ASP.NET, um, the session would be part of the synchronization context. It would get restored if you're coming back to the same, same context. All of that uh, stuff in the request in our HTTP request is right. Things like that that we would want the the session, mm -hmm. the cookie uh, connections, uh, anything that was uh, submitted through a query string or through a post. Um, Correct. In the headers, okay. Yep, and anything I I believe anything in the session based cache is also restored the same way. Okay. 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 And that, uh, and again, there, I'm going to be pretty close, but I'm not sure. I'm exactly sure. Scott may, if he's still watching, may know a little bit better exactly what's restored there on the ASP.NET side. And in the Windows side, localization will be there. Um, and the UI thread affinity will also be part of the context. Okay. Okay. And I think. I think localization is by context, not by process. So I think localization is also the um, is also part of that. Now, um, cheer up, cheer up in the in the chat room is asking. So we used to have to use configure await with ASP.NET. 
why don't we have to use it anymore? And actually, there's the answer. Yeah, somebody else in the chat room jumped in and said, well, yeah. configure await true is now the default. Correct. And I think configure await true was always the default. And here, the reason is, if I stay on the same context, the code always works. Okay. So let's make the default something that always works. Sure. There are times when switching context can improve throughput. So if you know that because of the code you're writing, switching context will improve throughput, then you can switch context. Okay. But by default, don't switch context. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, another comment here is the rule I use for configure await is if I do an async call inside my library, yes. always append configure await false. I would do that unless I was writing a UI library. And I okay. think that's a, that's a, a very good smart practice. You will, you will definitely get things working better by doing it. Configure await false when okay. you know that that works. All right. All right. So moving on then, so we're this test delay. I don't care. It's fifty milliseconds. I'm just trying to to let the processor breathe for a second. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the same context. Cool. Right. right. So now now this message loop that we're we're doing, it's now mm -hmm. asynchronously reading and writing everything yep. to the network, uh, con our TCP connection, like we're showing here on line 185, we're checking to see if messages are available, and then we're sending messages and receiving messages appropriately. And then I'm trying to right. be smart here and hand off and say, go process messages in another method, and I'll figure out how to handle those over there. But I still have a thread sleep down here. That's going to block, isn't it? Yeah, let's, let's get rid of that. Now, when you have the thread sleep down here, um, okay, now since this one is specifically for, we're going to do a couple things here. Since this is specifically because we're no longer connected, you actually want a real timeout here and you want a real pause. Let's let's switch that to an. We're going to await task dot delay again. Okay. Okay, because that is only when we we need to do it because we've lost the connection and we're starting again, right? Sure. Now, we're going to make this, make our throughput and our responsiveness a little better is one of our last changes. This whole loop right now, it's only 50 milliseconds, but we're delaying 50 milliseconds every time to see if there's a message available and we're going to look. And what we had before was on line 188 where we had the call to read message. That was sure. going to block, block this thread. Oh, yeah. This is no longer going to block. It's now just going to yield and say, yeah, okay, when there's a message, we'll come back and continue. Okay. Uh... So I'm going to take this first await and I'm going to move it up outside of this uh, while true loop. And we're just going to make it, you know, one because I really don't need to await that much. Okay. Because now what's going to happen every time through this loop, when we get to this read message async, that's just going to yield control and wait, or in await. Other stuff can happen. Okay. And we'll come back to this again. Right. So I don't need that every time through the loop to explicitly wait because I'm going to finish the message. I'm going to get to, you know, right here to line 186. I'm going to read a message asynchronously. So I'm going to await until there is a message to read. All right. All right. And then. We're going to process that one message. You can see we've got the ping. We've got the process the message. And then we're going to go back up. We're going to see I'm still connected. And I'm going to await again when I go to read this message. Okay. So okay. The, the loop feels a little bit more, um, it's more event-driven now instead of very time-driven like I had it before. Right. Right. So now it's just going to get to this spot. There's no message. We'll await, just like that toaster. Right. When the toaster pops up. Let's go here and let's let's process that message. Okay. okay. That that makes a lot more sense to me. All right. Okay. Now, and that's really most of what's in. Let's go back to the one that kept crashing on us. I'm going to show the one trick that I wanted to show. 
Um, do, 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 do. We are in. I was disconnected. Of course, it really does not want to show this one message. Uh, Which method were we looking at? Was that, uh, it wasn't process message. It was, I think it was, was read. Uh, I think it was, it was either the write message or the whisper message where I added the throwing the exception. Oh, oh, um, yeah, it was, it was in the whisper message. There it is. Yes. Here on 155. All right. Now, so this, this last part, now, the way this is written right now, if you call whisper message with a null username, you won't observe that obse uh, exception yeah. until you await the return from whisper message. Okay. Let's go back to that initial, initial abstraction that I talked about. Okay. 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 Where when a method runs synchronously, every method that runs synchronously either finishes or throws an exception. And when a method is asynchronous, it's going to return this task object that can tell you later if it succeeded or if it failed. Okay. And it's only when you await that task object that you can see did it succeed or did it fail okay so so where this is okay. being referenced so now right we need to walk back to that and be able to in, mm -hmm. to inspect this task here right mm-hmm so right now yeah it, you know any exceptions hangs out. Oh, this is weird. I'm not able to join your session with the link I had before because you seem to be offline. Oh no. That's what um Yeah. Now I've done it. Developers, 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 uh, developers, let's developers. let's end and restart. Yep, an unknown error has occurred. Okay. Neat. All right. Let's try restarting code. One thing, it's another. Yeah, it's, hey, it's my turn to okay. have it crash on me. So let's quit that and restart. And signing in. Share. And I'm going to bet I have a, a different session ID at this point that I'm going to need, right? Oh, yeah. I think you're right. There we go. I will paste that for you. And here we go, joining it. And with any luck, we can get to this. Yeah. Um... Uh... All right, so uh, while you're reconnecting here. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. That's what we're working on. So WYSIWYG, yes, this is C-sharp. Um, and AMGD, A-M-G-D-Y, uh, asks, what is the ah. difference between await task delay versus thread yes. sleep? Okay, so if I await task.delay, that thread can be given other work. If I do thread.sleep, that thread blocks and cannot do any other work. So there you go. So again, it's about throughput. Right. All right. And I think it was, yeah, it was cheer up, answered that one. <laughs> Just, oh, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Now, I'm back in. So we were looking at whisper message, if I remember right. Right. So I it to be. Here on line 155, we're throwing that exception. Yeah, there we go. Right. Yeah, Space Shot TV is a good example. If you do it with a WinForms app, you can really see the difference. 
Mm. So what? this is the one time when leveraging this difference between a synchronous task returning method and an asynchronous method is useful. Okay. So now what I'm going to say is I'm here in our whisper message async. I'm going to remove the async modifier on this public method. Okay. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce an async task method that for right now I'm just going to call local method. Don't okay. have I don't have you I don't have your modifications here popping up yet. Oh, All right, no. I will make sure you get them in just a sec. Okay. There we go. Hopefully we get them. Is that popping in now? We're trying to save. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now you should be seeing them. No. no. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, there you go. Here it comes. Look at that. It's there Oh my go. gosh, it's okay. like speed typing. So, I'll walk through this. So now oh, wow. what we've done. Let's start let, let's start at line um 157. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, I've introduced a local method here. This is or local function. This is something that was added in C# sharp 7. Okay. So AC task, local method, var full message, so on. That is an asynchronous method that is a local function. Okay. okay. It is inside a public method that is a synchronous task returning method. Okay. okay. So whisper message async is now going to check all our parameters, check all our arguments, and synchronously throw an exception if something is bad. And if nothing is bad, it will start the asynchronous work. That makes sense. By deferring control to a local function that is asynchronous. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay? Now, the reason we do that is that way if there's a programming error or something bad in terms of you know, this method just can't continue, and I want to throw that exception as quickly as I possibly can and have other developers who are using my library observe it as quickly as they possibly can. I want to throw that exception synchronously. Makes sense. Okay. But I want the async stuff around everything, everything else. Okay. So it's not going to kick off and start behaving asynchronously till after it's done its validation. Correct. Okay. And thank you, Philip. Uh, I'm glad you like that tip. <laughs> yeah, I, have, visit I hadn't seen this. .com board. It's, it's uh, documented up there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. So and and right, we're getting that hoist type of mechanism where even though we've declared that that local method lower inside of our our whisper message async, mm -hmm. it's still available to us as part of the the right the body of this method. Okay. And if you look, I don't need to pass the arguments. You know, it's declared inside whisper message async, so it can access any of the arguments or any local variables of whisper message async. So we're still in the same scope. Got it. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's, it's some of those folks in the chat room think this is a cool technique. There we go. That right. was why. That, this is why. This is probably one of the big reasons why local functions made the cut. It turns out it wasn't that hard to implement. It kind of fell out naturally. Mm. And there are idioms like this that just make it super useful and super easy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is... Th this feels like, you know... Uh, okay, we're, we've properly divided the the method, the whisper message async method, to those things that we immediately need to do. And those things that, well, take your time, let me know when you're done. Right. Okay. And mainly where I use this is argument validation and other things where if something's bad, I want to throw that exception immediately 
you know, as quickly as I can and to the right spot as fast as possible. Sure. Okay. All right. Now. And yep, you can do it with a lambda accession or expression. This actually is a little easier. Lambda ex expressions, you have to initialize and you may have to define them twice and some weird stuff. But um, yeah. if you look at in the C sharp guide, under what's new in C-sharp 7, I go into all the details on the um, different ways Lambda ex expressions for this can be more difficult to get right. Mm. Okay. Um, Should oh, I have to await the local method? Nope, a... because I want it to return synchronously. Oh. It. Yep. Uh, space chat. I like lambdas. Or he says I like lambdas, but I recognize that for many people it is a foreign language to decode. <laughs> I like lambdas a lot as well, and I will use them in a lot of different places. Um, the two things where local methods or functions are easier is because I can call the local function before it's defined. Recursion is a lot easier using local functions than lambdas. Oh yes. Oh my god. And then there, there are some some places where local functions can be, the compiler can generate code without creating a closure and it can be a little bit more efficient from memory allocation. Mm. Sometimes. But, mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we've, we've broken this up. It's marked at async. The, the, the local method is marked async task because it has an asynchronous... Uh, has an asynchronous op operation occurring, we wanted to mark with a wait. Got it. Yep. And because it's async, we should return task. We should always return task. And right. because whisper message async now returns task. But now that feels... So now line 153, this feels strange because now we have a method that returns a task but isn't async. Right. And that works. Okay. And here, I, I think you're, we're in keeping with the spirit of declaring async methods as async, Yeah. even though this is a synchronous method, by putting the async suffix on it. Because it is an asynchronous method, I'm just deferring some things internally as an implementation detail. Okay. I'm going to clean up the, uh, the indentation here just a little yes, please bit. Do. It looks good on my screen. I'm not sure where... You know what? I've I've found that that live share because I, I use two space tabs doesn't quite always line things up properly when it passes things back and forth. If folk, one ah, okay. if if the host uses tabs and the guest uses spaces, sometimes it gets a little confused. I think. And uh, Banaphase question: Is this like a Java? Or I was thinking this is like a JavaScript closure. Very, very similar. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and yeah, JavaScript closures, right? It's a way for us to hide and encapsulate functions inside of other functions. Right. So, um, I do not have Control K D here because I'm in Visual Studio Code, right? I don't think I have format document here. Uh, no, there is no format document. Okay. So, oh dear. is it Alt Shift F? Is it? Uh, Alt Shift. <laughs> well, mm. uh, thank you, Space Chat TV. That was one I wrote. <laughs> Which one? Oh, that uh, he's Space linking Chat to TV. your documentation. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> uh, we try. Oh yeah. Uh, there it was, format document. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. Didn't know it was there. See, I'm going to be learning a lot with the Mac. All right. So now, so now yeah, these methods. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it's good to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say I find it good exercise to work on the Mac, and uh, experience both sides. Oh yes, that's that's part of the goal this month. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, all right, 
we were saying about this is an async method that returns a task. So now if I walk back up to where this is being used, right? So now I'm awaiting this here. Correct. And uh, actually, I don't always want to return true. I want to I want to check if there's an exception. And if there is an exception, return false and maybe even bubble up that exception. Um, mm -hmm. So I right I want to I I want to wrap this then. Where are we at? I'm. Um, I am in. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. So if I do that, and then if I say catch, and I don't really care what the exception is, I'm going to end up rethrowing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go here. Put that there. So oops, I reached for my control key. All right, so I'm going to return false, and actually, I don't want to return false. I want to th throw the exception. Right. But I'm in a... So he, here's some more confusion, right? If otherwise return true, do I throw the... I can't throw the exception and return here, right? I want to... How do I raise the exception so it comes back in the task? Oh, if you just throw here? Yeah. It will... Okay. You can then, even just then throw. I'll... Then where you await send whisper async... Yeah. That would throw the exception, or that is where the exception could be caught. Okay. So if I just did that... Yep. So I don't really need the try-catch. It'll still... No, no. Not, not if you're going to switch back, switch over to exceptions. Okay. So if I get rid of all that, I'm still in. I'm still okay leaving it like this because then where, where this is called, yep. it will actually, um, hand. It will have to handle that exception over there. Right, and now what's going to happen? And here's where again, this is an abstraction that can kind of sometimes leak. When you await a task and that task has faulted, Okay. what you will observe there and what will be rethrown is the first task of a... Um, I forget which task or which exception type it is, but it's the one that carries multiple exceptions. Um, okay. I'm going to look up the exact type. So... Um, so let's let's just bubble this up and and look at the next place where it could be called, and it's it's got zero references because it's actually being called through an interface, and I know it's being called um, over here by my ping ah, command. So yeah. so here, anyway, this is. So it will... Go ahead. Yes. And the, and no, the... Go ahead. <laughs> so that that send whisper async is being called here and this is being awaited inside of this command. Right. Yep. So now what will happen here? Okay, so let's say this throws an exception. Yes. Because you awaited this, that first argument exception, which is what we threw, is going to be the thing that gets thrown here. When you await a faulted task. Okay. The mechanism that, that happens is inside the task, there is an aggregate exception. Right? Okay. Always. Because tasks may end up, if you're awaiting multiple things, having multiple tasks so bad, and here's a collection of everything that went wrong. Okay. Okay. So when you await something, the first task of that argument exception is the one that is thrown. Okay. Okay. If you explicitly want to look at it and you're explicitly doing something where I started five tasks and I did a win all and now like four of them faulted and I wanted to find all those. Right, inspect you them have to look and at, handle. Yeah, you have, have to look at the task itself, see the aggregate exception, and see the collection of exceptions in it. Okay. But because so, the very typical use case is I'm starting one task, only one exception would happen because the mm. first exception ends all the processing await automatically unwraps it and gives you the first one. Okay. Okay? Okay. So so following the chain here, 
in our chat mm -hmm. client here on 156, we're throwing the exception if the username yep. is missing. This right. gets bubbled up to this await. Yep. Where it would throw again here, mm -hmm. and it would get bubbled up to this await. And if I wanted to handle it here, right. which is twice removed, I could, just mm -hmm. for the sake of demonstration here, I could recall call this this task, right? Yep. And yep. do I, I don't want to, well, if I do await this... Yeah, then it's the result. It's not you won't have a task anymore. Right. So now I've yeah, whatever. Yeah. But if I the, so, don't, this task right, is actually now, a task object. Right. Now now you can await this task, but I'm gonna wrap it in a try. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Let's wrap it in a try for the point of discussion here. Mm-hmm. So we say this task dot well I would do an await on this. Do an await. Like that? Yep. Okay. Now, now you're going to catch. Right and, now, just catch whatever. And now, right. And now it's going to be this task dot exception. Okay. Almost, I think. Now, is, is this exception different from this exception? Yes. Yes. This uh, task that exception is going to always be the aggregate exception. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the first exception in the collection, like this task dot exception dot, I think it's inner exception. Yeah. There I'd have to look up the API reference again. And there's also inner exceptions. Oh, look at that, a collection of yeah. exceptions. And that's what you want to look at. It's going to be the first one there. Okay. Okay. And where that is useful is like, let's say you're making, say, 10 web requests out to different places, and then you're going to do a task.winall. That one could have multiple exceptions. Sure. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So I could even, right there, I could say count and actually find out how many of those right. had a problem. Yep. Very cool. Okay. How many exceptions? And what is count? There it goes. And then I can work from there. Now, this exception is different from that exception. Is Correct. this one the first of those inner exceptions? Uh, yes. Okay. So ex would be the same as this task dot exception dot inner exceptions index zero. And then one from the chat room, one small correction. If you don't await, right, that is correct. Jovan says, if you don't await, wait, or look for a result, you won't catch the exception. And that is true. If you fire and forget, it won't happen. Because so you're you won't forgetting. See them. Right, yeah. you fire and forget it. And there it's going to be a little implementation dependent exactly what happens. There we go. Thank you for the right. for the using reference there, Brendan. Okay. You could also uh, do var this task equals await chat service. Um, nope, that's gonna open it up. I think. Well, that'll you, right. That'll uh, fire it immediately. Yeah. Then the this task is the result, not the task itself. Right. Right, so if I look at send whisper async, this is returning task of type bool. So this task is now a task of type bool. Yep. And right, this is where, right, if we make this await, it's actually allowing this to run here on line 17, and I get just yep. the Boolean. Where right. if I just receive it, I'm receiving a pointer to this. Yep. And this is when I'm saying, okay, run it now. Right. But that's, yep. so what, do I end up with a similar thing? Because I know I can do uh, task dot, right? And I, I cheat and use this all the time. I'll use task when mm -hmm. all, and I'll just yep. pass in 
this task. Right? Yep. That would be fine. Yep. But so because this is not a weighted right, it's and that's that's simply going to return a, a task that finishes when this task ends. Okay. So so then now all right now I'm going to show what how what a what a bad coding citizen I am is. I normally do something like this: get the awaiter, get result. Okay. So yep. if I if I understand correctly, if from what we've learned here today, these two statements are the same. As me saying that. Pretty much. Um... Except the, the, the difference is this yeah. requires this keyword, right? Because I have an await, I'm required to put async. If I don't have await, and I do get awaiter dot get re not hash code. Now I don't need to have async. And, and I'm still yeah. firing my collection of tasks and well, waiting okay, so, until they're finished. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, um, okay, so, so first of all, from the official docs, Get result is meant to be from the infrastructure, so don't do that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but now here's what, what actually does kind of happen. Okay. okay. You could you could just do this task dot get away there dot get result. Okay. Okay. You don't need the task that went off. Oh sure, sure. If I had several other tasks, right? Right. Right. Other task. Some other other task. Etc. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, and now, but so in general, the, the compiler will be generating the calls to get a waiter and hooks up its stuff from that. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there's some other things involved in there in terms of the infrastructure. You'll see I crit I notify completion and I critical notify completion, which are also not meant to be called by the stuff that you usually do. Okay. Um, because that just gets a bit crazy. Now, yeah. yeah. So, so the next question, and I'm I'm not going to get into to Joe Bun's question about changing everything to value task, um, <laughs> b because um, um, I'm actually at some point I, I bubble up here and I do have synchronous code that I want to call this, right. How do I make that jump between the synchronous and the asynchronous? And just for the point of discussion here, I'm just going to open up some space. And here on line 15, let's just say public uh, test send message to Jeff, right? And I, I would want to do execute C sharp Fritz is me. Mm -hmm. And uh, hello, Jeff. Right, so that if right. if I were doing this, oh, I need a method return value. So I have this synchronous method that I want to call into mm -hmm. execute and send that whisper, and my full command text actually gets ignored here. That's okay. It's going to send back pong to me because that's what this command does. Fine. Right. How do I handle this? I don't want to put an await on this because that means this method needs to be async. Right. Normally what I, what I would do there is at the end of the execute before the semicolon. Yes. Put a dot, dot wait or dot result. Okay. Yep. Okay, now what that does is that says start this task and then wait until it is done synchronously. Okay. Okay. Now, here's where I'm going to say this is really only the things, only for this top level stuff. And really, the more you put this in your code, the more it really starts to slow things down. It acts like a drag. This tells the thread, start this task, 
and then synchronously block and wait until it is done and then continue. Okay. So we really only want to do this if you're at some top level handler and there's no other way you can say, I'm going to return stuff later. Okay. okay. So, so, all right, let's back up one item here. So this command, mm -hmm. right, to, to, to finish closing the loop on how this works, the, the bot itself will listen for a command. It'll listen for that ping command, and I'm looking for the code here. Da, 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 da. Uh, that's the hosted service. It's going to listen for a command, and then it raises an event. And I want to make sure that I'm yep. calling my execute method now properly. Um, okay. <laughs> that's not it. User joined. I'm looking for it. I know it's here. So here's where we're receiving chat messages. Mm -hmm. Try to get value. Try to get the chat user information. Uh, oh, that's... So I've actually got two different ways that I handle messages here. If somebody asks a question and it ends with a question mark, I actually fire it off to Azure and say, try to answer this question. Otherwise, okay. um, <laughs> where is it? I actually have, here it is. Go look at all yep. the commands that we know. And then here's a wait command execute. Right. So... This is being handled inside of this event handler that we've had to make an async task, which right. feels strange because it's an event handler, right? Because after this happens, right, the event handler ends, and <clears throat> I don't, I don't really care at that point. Right. These are these are the so because this is an event handler, and um where you wire this up, there's a good chance that it's expecting an async void or a void method because it's an event handler. Um, yeah, so this is... Yeah, so th here's exactly how you've, you've done it correctly here, right? Okay. Because your event handler's void, you're going to await it, which ensures that you catch any exceptions that happen here. But because your event handler has to be a void returning method... And doesn't event handlers don't participate in the async infrastructure? This has to be a void method, so you're doing the best thing you can here. Okay. Which is something happened. I'm going to start some tasks. I'm going to wait to see what happened. Log some messages if I have to. Meanwhile, other things are going on. So where you're getting the advantage here, okay, is I don't know what um, triggers this event handler. Uh, let's walk back. Here it is. So, so the chat service, so the IRC bot, yep. has has raised an event that it received right. a chat message that needs to be processed. Okay. So here's what where you get the advantage from async at this top level. Even though we have to do async void and start something and then you know, kind of feel bad about what we're doing. <laughs> Your hosted service, it raises this event. Okay. And your code is going, yep, I got the event. I'm starting a task to work with it. Continue. And now your hosted service, its thread is unblocked and can do other work if there's another message coming in and so on and so forth. Got right? It. Okay. So we could update the UI to go, somebody's writing a message. Or you know, you could receive another message and start a second copy of this event handler while it's still waiting for whatever you're going to do in that handler. Okay. 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 But this is a point where you have to understand that you have to do something asynchronous. And because of that, the thing calling it, you have to clean up after yourself. Sure. And okay. effectively, that's why I've got catch. And we're, yeah, yep. don't let the exception escape from the async void. I think, right. I think our friend uh, Ben Adams helped write this method. Right. Right. Okay. So the last thing that I want to just check with, so that makes a lot of sense, and I want to make sure that my handle Azure question, because I, I actually reach out to the Azure Cognitive Services and I let that do its thing. This is returning a task, and yep. it passes over to that method, and it does its mm -hmm. execute over there, and it goes. Yep. 
So I think I'm I think I'm in a lot better shape now. Right. So now there's a few things in the chat room we should finish finish up. Okay. Especially the the last two questions. Hazard X64 says, you know, will this cause the messages to be out of order? That depends on what you do inside the event handler yourself right. because you'll start processing another event. Those will be on other threads if they're available. If the second one's a whole lot faster than the first because of something, yeah, you might okay. see that. Um, uh, in ASP. and MVC, this is Jay Animos. Uh, uh, Johnny Most, it looks like. Johnny Most, okay. Um, had a bug where I had async void methods being called by async task methods, and I had to make them all return a task. Yes. Async void, here's the bad things that happen. Because it's a void, async void, like here with this event handler. There's nowhere to put the exception that causes a faulted task, because there's no task. So something else bad happens, which is, depending on the context, um, in a UI thread, it's going to put a message in the message queue that then uh, terminates the process mm. because you, basically you had an unhandled exception. Okay. In most instances, you're going to end up with something like an unhandled error exception because here's this exception that's now floating out in the ether and there's no call stack to bubble it up. Mm. The, the general theory at that point is anything that happens is going to be bad the least bad thing is to stop the program so not more bad things happen. Sure. Okay. That makes sense to me. Okay. Cool. Well, this was very helpful. Um, yeah, and designing for... TV, are we taking full advantage of ASP.NET's thread pool or your multi-core system or just plain having a responsive desktop UI? Yes, you do get to take full advantage of the thread pool. And oh, yeah. here's kind of here's the really short version of where it helps a lot on the server. Okay, is if you think of processing most web requests, you get a request in, mm -hmm. and then you're going to make some calls into other services, whether that be a database, Azure table, other Azure APIs. data lake, something. Yeah. Right. Some other API, and they're all asynchronous APIs. Even reading from the file system is an asynchronous API. I'm going to pull some stuff in and I'm going to then return whatever I read from whatever storage. Okay. Some, some form of process. Because the CPU is and the thread is actively doing work only for part of that, mm -hmm. I can get better throughput. I can handle more requests if those threads are asynchronously waiting for something to happen and can do other work and handle the next incoming request and start some process on the disk or start some process in the database, then I can get, if I get a request and now I have to block while all these other parts of the system do the work and then return the request. So you do get a lot of increased throughput in terms of how many concurrent requests you can handle and process effectively by doing asynchronous stuff. Cool. Okay. All right. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. It's noon. All right. And, this has uh, been great fun. This has been great. And we had a we had a couple technical issues there. We got them ironed out. Um, thanks so much for helping me here, Bill. This is really good. Hey, this is great. Um, well, now, in return, I never want to see you post on Twitter that you're going to <laughs> rip out all this asynchronous code and make it all synchronous. I promise. I won't do that. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's let's uh, open up a terminal here real quick. I am going to create an, a feature branch here real quick, um, and I will call this async chat client. And I'm going to commit everything that we changed here and there. Uh, work with Bill to make chat client async. And I'm going to push that to my origin so that everybody can take a look at this. Async mm -hmm. chat client. And I need to do that. Developers, 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 um, developers, developers, oh shoot, 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 shoot. This is, um, 
This isn't my GitHub. <laughs> no, this is. Hang on, this is my keychain. Right. Oh, crumbs. Uh... And while you're doing no. this, I'm going to answer the one one other question, which was, and when should we not use async await? Um, the cheer up asks. The one time I try not to automatically just do it is if all I'm trying to do is switch from one thread to another. So, like, let's take a, an ASP.NET request. Yeah. If everything I'm doing is going to be a whole lot of CPU-bound computation, and then I get a web request on one thread, if all I do is pass out run some CPU-bound thing, all I'm doing is possibly switching threads. So I don't really gain any throughput. But if I'm actually offloading something somewhere, then it's all good. Cool. So um, I actually need to pull my my secret key out of uh, GitHub and use that to log in here. Uh, so I will take care of that in just a few minutes after we get get done here. But of course, I will okay. archive off this video to YouTube. We'll see a, a link to that a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, Bill. This was this was a huge help. I I really appreciate it. I learned a lot about how task and async and await work. I was very confused. All right. Well, and, thank uh, you for inviting me. I hope uh, this helped everyone else too. Oh yeah. Uh, gosh, the questions in the chat room really reflect that. Uh, folks had a lot of of uh, a lot of questions themselves that I think we answered as well. That's good. Cool. All righty. Um, I'll be back on Thursday. Thursday, I, I've gotten a lot of questions from folks, uh, both on Twitter and on GitHub. A lot of pull requests from folks. I'm going to go through and just go through all of those uh, questions and answer them here on stream Thursday morning at 10. Alrighty, I'll catch everybody next time. Take care. <laughs>